Now I want to talk to you a little bit about another subject, which you could go in depth in any of these subjects, but we're just going to lightly touch on each of them. This is called worksheet events. Worksheet events are very powerful as well because these can be triggered by clicking, uh, by selecting, by saving workbook, um, activating a particular cell or group of cells with your mouse or with the uh, arrow keys. Um, basically, it's different way, ways to trigger or fire a macro based on how you would like for them to be triggered. So we've seen triggering them using an ActiveX control, like a button, or uh, clicking on uh, an ActiveX checkbox, but there's also different ways to do it. For example, uh, if you wanted to D, every time you deselected the current report worksheet, whenever you click away uh, from that sheet to a different tab, you'd like for that report or sheet to hide itself. You can do that on a deselect event. Or every time you activate a sheet, something to happen, a message box to pop, or something like that. So these, these uh, cannot be manually triggered. So you've seen me manually click F5 to run a macro or press F8 to manually begin um, triggering and, and going through. The only caveat with these is they can't be manually triggered like that. You have to trigger them using their trigger, whether it's a click on a worksheet or a click on a particular cell or something. That's how you trigger them. Also, you need to change the type of macro from general to worksheet, so we're going to demonstrate that in just a moment. Our technical demonstration is going to be on two different types. It's going to be a cell change and a selection change event. So let me go ahead and go through that. The first one, as we said, is going to be a cell change event. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference there. So this is a worksheet event. Whenever a cell is changed, whenever the value is actually changed, so that's when this is triggered. There's also a built-in system variable called target that you'll get to play with, and that represents whatever the cell or the cell's address or the cell's value or information. You can reference the cell there. So let's experiment with this just a little bit. Let's create a new one. I'm going to double click on this sheet and I'm going to call it change event. And I'm going to zoom in. Let's hit Alt F11, go back into the Visual Basic Editor. Now, in this one, like I said, typically when you're creating your own custom macros, you'll be just doing the general macros. But when you want to see your worksheet events or create a worksheet event, you need to switch it over to worksheet events. Then you have a wide range of options here that you can simply click on one of these options, such as the worksheet change event right here. If I click on change, it creates a new one for me automatically. It automatically knows how to do all this stuff up top that you don't need to know how to do. So in this worksheet change, we're going to keep it very basic. But every time on this particular worksheet, any cell's value has changed, it's going to say, you changed cell, and then whatever cell it was. So let's go ahead and put that in the worksheet change event. I'm going to delete this so it's not distracting. So uh, we're going to say message box space, and then inside the quotes, I'm going to say you changed cell space in quote, and I'm going to join that with an ampersand, just like you can do when concatenating inside of cells. You changed cell, and then I'm going to use member target represents the range that we're dealing with. So I'm going to say target uh, dot address. So you can use target.address. I'm going to go ahead and put 0, 0 in parentheses because I happen to know that that means do not use absolute, use relative. And that means instead of saying A1, uh, instead of saying dollar sign $A, dollar sign $1, it'll just say A1, which I think makes better sense in this context. So you change cell blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and trigger this. So I'm going to click around. Nothing happens, right? But if I actually change cell B3, hello there, and I tab away or do any kind of deselection, now the cell is actually solidified as having been changed. So this says you changed cell B3. 
and then if I say, well, I didn't want that exclamation mark on there, as the same thing happens. You change cell B3. You change cell E5. Okay, that's a change event, and it's very similar to the selection change event that we're about to go over.